Peace and power, Shabbata. How you reeling, man? How we reeling? Man, I hope y'all been in the ether. Man, we've been digging on it. A hive to the ether squad. A hive to the dragon sponsors on the wall, keeping the water flowing, man. We, we did our first official ether payouts, man. It was just cool to be able to share the flow, you know what I mean? Um, look, man, you know, this is just something that we have a vision of being able to provide non-stop drop, non-stop drop. You should be able, I don't care if you got social media or not, or whether YouTube shuts down, or you know what I'm saying, Twitter, whatever the case is, Instagram, if you ain't got nothing else, and you just got an internet signal, we still got some net, you can always uh, surf the wave, man. You know what I'm saying, get the app, because, you know, when it goes down and when the shit's happening, and it feels like it's happening any minute, whatever the case is, you know, we're not anxious, we're just, uh, you know, we know we're living in prophecy, man. You know what I mean? So make sure you got the app. Make sure you're on the site. It's being updated daily, 432thedrop.com. And uh, yeah, man, to be able to share the ether flow so far, I mean, we got, I want to say 12, 13, close to 15, maybe uh, Dragon Sponsors. That's about $700 a month that's coming in to the Dragon Sponsors. I mean, to, you know what I'm saying, the, the ether squad every, every month. So $700. There's 17 of us dropping in the ether, so that $700 gets divided 17 ways. So that's about $40 a person right now. You know, we're just getting started. We're just getting started. Be patient. We're just getting started. Uh, but just to have that official flow going, man, you got everything lined up. It's it's easy for everyone, you know what I mean? And just to know that, hey, man, that's that's dinner, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Drop Nation is buying the ether squad dinner, you know, once a month right now, you know what I'm saying? But soon that 40 is going to be 400, and that 400 is going to be 4,000, and you're going to have a whole tribe that's able to save up, to buy land together, you know what I mean, to uh, get whatever survival needs, whatever they need, and just survive, you know, just by reading books to you, just by dropping it to you, man. So make sure you got the app, make sure you're on the site, make sure you're digging on it, man. Um, you know what I mean? I've been in it. I've been in that Zion Jazz Hour, you know what I mean, just today, just getting jazzy. You know what I'm saying? Watching Chef Candy do her thing in the kitchen. You know what I mean? Just feeling good, man. So get on the stream and a hop to the Dragon Sponsors to all the incredible donations as well. Right now, man, you already know, man, we're doing it for the prisoners and the captives. And that's you, my naga. That's you. You the prisoner. You the captive. And the situation I had to go through was truly Baruch, man. It was truly a blessing because I got to truly gain a perspective. I earned that. You know what I mean? I got to go in as drop and be able to share the drop to my brothers in there and immediately all that other bullshit stop you know like you got your own perspective of jail and yeah you know, you know obviously you got your codes you know what i'm saying you got your ethics you got your black table you got your paisa table you got your south sider table <laughs> you got your white table that shit is still going on like it's the 50s man but there's also a vibration you know what i mean that you can bring that really brings all that together, man. And a lot of times people think when you when we over here kicking history and stuff like that and acknowledging who we are, that we're hating on other people and all, and all that, calling, oh, they're synthetics and X, Y, and Z. Look, man, at the end of the day, we all got to get in the flow of a vibration. And Judah, you know what I'm saying, has to be able to spark that as the root of the tree of life. The tree of life is rooted through Judah. And when everybody sees that clearly, when you're over there teaching them, they get it, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, that's it's tribal, man. Hawaii is tribal. This is tribal. And we do it for a tribe behind the wall, man, behind the barrier. And I had my uh, six-month, you know, confrontation, man, in the lion's den. And really, man, Hawaii, you know what I'm saying, made sure that all my situations, you know what I'm saying, were, were ethered up. You know, I had to go through some tough nights, man, some tough times, man, some, some you know, cold cold mixes, you know what I'm saying, I mean, you know, definitely you had, all, you, had, you had all that going on that you're thinking, but at the same time, Hawaii, you know, truly did anoint, you know, the the bros, man, that was seeing clearly, man, truly anointed our heads with oil, you know what I mean, by the time I'm out of there, at MDC alone, we had 12 bros keeping Shabbat, man, by the time I got to Long Park, man, it was just an explosion of bros that wanted to know the drive, wanted to learn about Press the Giant, wanted to learn about the uh, timelines and chronology and put everything together, talk about dragons, talk about crazy things, man. Those brothers from Hawaii that say, look, man, I, we know that you black Americans, you know, are Israelites. We, we're taught that. We already know who the Israelites are. I'm like, well, why don't you tell us, man? Like, we know that because, you know, they, 
they connect all that th stuff through the Mormon and the Nephi and the Nephi, but they know the Nephi is you. I mean, all these things are happening. But what I'm sharing with you today, man, is uh, some great work, man, that I got to witness. You know what I mean? So this is nothing for you to just take verbatim. I need you to search it out. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to drop a document on you that I'm not even really putting on a website. Like, this is a real personal thing, man. So if anybody want to copy of this, email me if you're serious. You know what I mean? I'll make sure you get a PDF of this. This is a 13-page habeas put together by Thaddeus Culpepper. Thaddeus is, uh, or was, one of Suge Knight's attorneys, man. So you know he was in a whirlwind, you know, in chaos when he walked in and magnetically bumped into me. And we started sharing the drop. And he, he knew I had something to say when we started talking about being indigenous because he said, man, I've been researching that and a lot of people don't know that. And so we kind of connected through the indigenous. So you can imagine how excited he was to really dig on the Hebrew connection with America, Preston John, King David, all the artifacts, different things here. And it became just, you know, I don't know. I ain't studying the brother's case. I ain't studying the brother's past. You know, whatever the case with Suge Knight. You know what I mean? All I know is that we formed a team, man. You know what I'm saying? We was like, you know, it felt like some movie, man. You know what I mean? Where we were really, like, literally in captivity and said, okay, you know, what can we put into our casework to make X, Y, and Z, you know, make sense? You know what I mean? And so we started talking about habeases. If you don't know what a habeas is, you know what I mean? You know, let's just look up the definition of a habeas, man. I hope you're feeling the water. You know what I mean? We've been in the water all day, man. We've been zoning. And, you know, this is a real... You know, this this really doesn't mean a lot, man, because I really saw this come together, you know, from a few bros every day, taking over the barbershop, putting together, uh, uh, putting the uh, keyboard out, typewriter out, ordering the ribbon, saying, all right, you're trying to order the ribbon, you get the paper, you get the copy cards. Like, we really had a team going, man. Love to my big homie out here, man, Inglewood, nutty boy, man. I mean, Inglewood legend and his brother Green Eyes, man. Love to y'all. Uh, Nutty still fighting a uh, life sentence, man, in state, man. So he was just doing some federal casework, basically. You know what I'm saying? When I bumped into him, but he's still, you know, looking at that L, man. So uh, Green Eyes look, looking at 50, 50, 60 years. You know what I'm saying? Um, love to my my bro uh, Young, man, from the Pueblos out here in L.A. He's looking at an L. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm doing this with brothers that are looking at life, man. Is what I'm trying to tell you. You know, some had just finished doing 20 years for this, 10 years for that. You know what I mean? My uh, my Selly, <laughs> my Selly RJ from Compton, man, from Carver Park, man. Love to you. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully you out soon. And uh, that's what I'm working out with every day, man. RJ making sure drop working out every day, man. These these bros really did form a wall of protection, man. And I know I got a real tribe. Love to my boy, my 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 real one, man. <laughs> my real bro, man. Uh, Brent, man. My, my boy B. Love to be, man, from uh, Long Beach, man. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, B really, he really got it. He, he really got the drop, you know what I'm saying? When we talked Preston John, he got it immediately. Like, there was no, uh, you know, no disconnect. Like, he got it immediately, you know what I'm saying? The next day, he's just like, where's my stuff? Where's my thing? Where's my staff, man? You know what I mean? He'll wake me up. Where's my staff, man? Let's go get our gold, man. You know, he just want to go work out. But he's, he's talking like that. You know, he'll go to sleep. Shalom. <laughs> you know what I mean? And just because he wants to learn. He wants to learn, man. So, love to my bro B. I mean, so many bros. Man, Eugene. Love to Eugene. Love to my bro Jay. Jay still doing time in Terminal Island. We all came together. We got the supplies. And we sat there, man, on the daily. At the time, Thaddeus still had a cup of... Uh, court cases coming up, you know what I mean, for his thing, so he wanted to have it ready for that, and file his habeas, but make sure that we had a copy of what we put together, you know, so we took a bunch of information, put it together, including scripture, you know what I mean, um, you know, because scripture is law, you know what I mean, according to this corporation, so we put it together, you know, and again, let's look at the habeas is, man, let's dig on habeas, let's go 1828 style. Let's just dig on this Wata, man. Shalom. Let's 
Yeah, we're gonna have to dig on it because habeas ain't even in the 1828 dictionary from what I'm seeing. So I'm gonna look at it like this. Let's just do a Google stuff. See what we can get. So it says habeas corpus is a recourse in law through which a person can report an unlawful detention or imprisonment to the court. So if you've been unlawfully detained or imprisoned, you can file a habeas. You know, that I'm being unlawfully detained. Now, what does that mean? Why are you unlawfully detained? And that's your next step is saying, look, man, this corporation ain't even real. You know what I mean? I'm the I'm the primary creditor, not the debtor. I mean, we was over there reading uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, digging on the creditor, not the debtor. We're going to get some of that today. You know what I'm saying? So, Hawaii says, I'll make you the head, not the tail, you know. You listen to me, you follow the commandments, you'll be the the credit, you'll be the uh the creditor, not the debtor. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna have to pay nobody or borrow money from nobody as no debtor. Like you ain't gonna be in debt, you know what I mean? They're gonna borrow from you. Instead, everything is flipped. You gotta borrow from them, you know, X, Y, and Z, you're the tail, not the head. So let's keep reading. And click the links below, man. Let's dig on it. Get this one here. Let's check out Wikipedia. And then I'm gonna check out the uh, the Cornell Law Dictionary. Alkaline. Now Wikipedia says habeas corpus literally means that you have a body. Now look, man. I would never tell you to sign a contract with no corporation. But when it comes to what to file in your cases, if, if you're in that situation, you know what I mean? Unless you just go Buck Rogers and say, you know, I ain't going to court. You know what I mean? Do you. Do you. But if you're in court and you're like, all right, I'm tired of playing, playing the wing wham. I'm tired of playing the charades. Let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. If I'm going to be in your court, you know, I mean, I know the, you know, Morris be kicking all kind of, you know, Morris, Morris shields and stuff, man. I ain't getting all that. But if you're going to be in court, you know what I mean, and you've been unlawfully or you're going to be unlawfully detained, one thing you got to know already is that this account that they're charging, they have charges against you, this account that they're charging has already been charged. It's been charged many times. And that's, that's when you get into the whole birth certificate, the number on your birth certificate, the account that's already in the straw man of your name in all caps is already a straw man, all right? That's an account. You're not using it. Some people know how to tap into it. There was some brothers, you know what I mean, that I met, you know, in the uh, in the crux, you know what I'm saying, that knew all about that. Uh, you know, so let's get to this. Habeas corpus. It means that you got a body. Corp. A corp. A corp. A corpse. Alright. Dead body. Corpse. Follow me now. Is a recourse in law through which a person can report an unlawful detention or imprisonment to a court and request that the court order the custodian of the person, usually a prison official, to bring the prisoner to court to determine whether the detention is lawful. So, you might be finding your case... Let's put all these charges to the side. Let's get real. Let's get serious. All right, you, you're charging me with possession of drugs. Are you charging me with, in my case, they was talking about a credit card that they said I didn't have authorization with because my own brother said, okay, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to call these, I'm going to call my attorneys and tell them that you didn't have authorization on my car, all to get back at you over this situation or this family beef, whatever the case is. So I had to fight my own brother for eight, nine years. And that's my situation I shared in my, um, you know, false witness one and two. Go, go, go get the drop for all that. You know what I mean? So I'm in my situation. Now, time out. Let's put all this to the side. Let's put all this to the, to the side because you're coming at me over 20 G's that I'm being alleged of spending, but you're not acknowledging my actual business with this person, you're not acknowledging my salary with this person, you're not acknowledging that. Why? Because 
my own brother is claiming that he has no knowledge of our company, right? He has no knowledge of all this stuff. So I'm I'm now having to start from scratch to prove that my brother had knowledge of this corporation. Not only did he have knowledge of the business that we started, but his own lawyers put the whole package together, the operating agreement, the articles of incorporation, and he's sitting in there in court saying that he had no knowledge of the company. As if I started an LLC with his name on it, using his lawyers that he had no knowledge of. I had to do this from scratch just because of a vendetta against me. So I'm being literally delivered on a platter, hand delivered to this system now. I don't need to be hand delivered to the system. They already got quotas for us. And that's what we're going to get first. They already got prison quotas like in Arizona in some private prisons. They guarantee a 100% capacity being filled, man, maximum capacity or minimum capacity that we're at least going to be 100%. They got spots out here at 97%. So while these, you know, states and governments are outsourcing these private prisons and promising them 97% uh, minimum occupancy, what's, what's now the burden of the state or the government to feel, to, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying, fulfill their contracts with these private prisons and keep feeding them bodies. So not only is it our bodies, it's not enough of us for it to make sense. So they supplement that with uh, the so-called Hispanic brothers and sisters, you know, X, Y, and Z. A lot of them is in there for re-entry because they were just working here, but they ain't supposed to be working across the border. So they put them in there for sometimes years on re-entries, man. Or they get caught up in the same, you know, gang stuff, the Ricos, you know what I'm saying? They get caught up and conspiracy charges, all kind of stuff. So th they're using us, you know what I'm saying? Um, mainly Hispanic, so-called African-American, we already know, you know, uh, poor whites, you know, or you, you have some uh, so-called Jewish cats too in there for embezzlement, you know, this is it's the feds, you know what I mean? But anyway, they, they don't rely on the whites to fill them things up. They just sprinkle whites in there. They rely on you, my naga. And a big portion right now is the so-called Hispanic population, so-called Latino population. I mean, so, you know, this is very important when we talk quotas. But again, habeas corpus, let's go. So it's crazy that it means that you have a body, even though a corpse is a dead body. Hmm. So now you can request the court. That's really your way of requesting the presence of the court or a magistrate. Aside from your case, put the charges to a side. Let's just talk about my account. Let me put a lien on my account. Because you think you need my vessel warehoused in this prison or, or, or this facility. You think you need to warehouse my body, but you're not acknowledging that you already have an account that you can charge. See, back in the day... You know, you, you, you commit a crime, it's payable by a fine or imprisonment. If you didn't want to pay the fine, you go to jail. Now it's just all imprisonment. They really don't give you the, the fine option, but there is a fine. There is an actual dollar amount attached to every day that you spend in jail. And sometimes you, you hear that close to $48,000, $48,000 a year that they're making off of each prisoner, even though... The official word of the government is that, well, we have to pay money to imprison you. In reality, it's coming right back to them in all kind of ways, more than you can even think, man. So they're not really naming all that. But they're not, they ain't, they ain't breaking themselves, putting you in jail. They're making money off, of it, especially the private prisons, because a lot of the private ones are already in bed with the state. So if the private ones are making money and they're taking state funds that they're literally creating out of nowhere to fund the private ones and they're getting the money out the private circle, man. So these same state people, these same legislators, whatever, are still getting the money from the private folks because they are connected and in bed with all that anyway. You dig? And this is a real shit, man. So I don't care who don't want to hear it. I don't care who, who don't want us to talk about it. We need to talk about it. This is something that's affecting us, man. This is something that's affecting our real ones, man. When you talk about Judah and when you're talking about tribing up and you ain't considering your brothers that are being unlawfully detained which is a huge amount which are the realest the, the the realest of the real ones the tribe man that was around me behind them bars man let me tell you man all right you know what i'm saying that that 
that ain't who you want to run across. You know what I'm saying? That ain't who you want to run across. And that's just real spit. You know what I mean? But they love the drop, man. They 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 love the flow. They love the shot by tie. Like anyone else who just got the drop because they surfing the wave on YouTube or, 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 or Instagram. I know you consider each other tribe that we've been able to meet through these platforms, man. But I'm talking real life, real spill, man. I'm talking real spill, working out in the rain, outside in the junk pile. And the bro walks by you and says, who is Preston John? If I don't do it for them, if I don't do it for my nigga B from Babies, 20 Insane, if I don't do it for my niggas out here, man, my noggers for real, if I come back here and just talk, you know, as if, oh, yeah, we, we're just... You know, in this book and that book, nah, man, we, we got to be trill about this. I can drop all kind of drop all day, right? I, I got I got notepads full of drop, man. You know what I mean? I got my next 30, 40 drops. I don't have to take any time between drops, but I take time between drops because I want to eat the rub. Because I don't just want to drop videos all day. I want the videos to count. The third wave is about it counting. It's not about what new information you're going to get today. I got a lot of new shit to share about the Sandbag Yon River or the, uh, we're going to get into some drive, you know, later on, on other drives. This whole 1453 business, how the Sandbag Yon River stopped flowing in 1453 and how that connects to the Byzantine Empire that went down in 1453 and how that connects to the dumb diverse Papal Bull in 1452 and in 1492 Columbus sells the ocean blue. We can connect all kinds of drive. We can do this all day. But we got to connect to the prisoners, y'all. We got to connect to our brothers. Because that's the fire starters right there, man. That's the fire starters right there, man. Who was Preston John, man? Let go. Let go. So I got a 13-page habeas corpus, man, to drop on y'all. And this was all typed up right before my eyes in the clink. This is typed up right before my eyes in the clink. <laughs> And while I'm there for my six months, going through the journey, Hawaii has me fighting, you know what I'm saying, for my innocence, for my personal freedom, you know what I mean, I'm just trying to finish the race, man, this is, this is my actual clipboard, you know, each dot I think is a week, these are all weeks, and then, you know, I was just lap one, lap two, finish the race, you know, I actually sat there in my jail cell, man, trying to get my trophy, <laughs> Trying to get my con drop trophy, man, and I had my, my table. I had my table key, in case, in case you didn't understand it. <laughs> but it was all about finishing the race, man. And that's what it is right here, man. It's about finishing the race, man. You know, it's the fourth quarter, man. We got to we gotta ball out. All right, we got to get serious. So, you know, let me get the rest of this habeas corpus. And then I want to get into uh, these private prisons. And then we're going to uh, read this great drop right here. And again, love to... Daddy is Culpepper, man. Uh, Suge Knight's one of Suge Knight's attorneys, man. And, you know, he's going through a massive amount of things, you know what I'm saying? But this really gave him hope, you know what I mean? It gave him hope to dig on President John. It gave him hope to dig on how we can relate and connect the drop to, you know, an actual written form of something that we can file if we wanted to. Because at the end of the day, they are already charging your account. So by the time you're sitting there with your vessel being warehoused, as a vessel you're being warehoused, and they've already charged your account, you could put them all on lean and on notice and say, stop charging my account. Let's have a hearing about this. And you need to, you know, show me, you need to provide to me all of your accounting. If you're going to charge me and charge my account this way, I'm, I'm the owner of my account. It puts them on, on notice that you're taking control of your account. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm taking control of this account. You know, show me as a primary creditor, now as the collateral for your corporation. I'm the, I'm the collateral, but you're imprisoning the, the collateral because in the 1930s, what happened? We're going to read about it, but what happened? The Great Depression, no more gold, all that stuff. So no more gold certificate. Now that's backed by birth certificate. So it affects more than so-called black people. We know that. These some, these, some, these some evil mofos, man. Now, they put your life in danger immediately by making you the collateral. By switching from gold to birth certificates, now your birth is the collateral for who? Whoever owns the colonial corporation now has you, your life, 
Now you're an infinite being. You're worth more than a whole pile of gold because you can create something today that is worth more than that whole pile of gold. You're infinite in what you can create. So there's no amount of money that, that doesn't relate to you as an infinite being. So there's actual bonds and special bonds and all kinds of things, general bonds that you can put into your corporation that they already created and say, hey, if you're going to charge anything, charge this bond. Here's $300 million. Or here's $3 million. I think this one's $3 million. All right, here's $3 million in that account. So, you know, these bonds are already created. Chef Candy was sending these bonds in and love to all the other sisters that were sending the bonds in to the jail, man, to the prison. I didn't think they would let them in. And some they didn't, so we had to get them through some Jewish folk, you know, and they had their really rich attorneys bring in these bonds for us. That's how we knew it was true, because it wasn't just us. Even the rich man was able, this guy's a multi-millionaire. He had his multi-million dollar lawyer bring in these, this paperwork. So we put it together, did a whole thing. We got the habeas, and we got all the special bonds, and I'll dig on those too, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, you know, I just wanted to share it uh, for the bros, man, and for the sisters that con contributed. And uh, something that you can really research, really for research purposes. And what you do with it, man, what you do with the knowledge is up to you, man. Again, habeas. The writ of habeas corpus is known as the great and e e fish efficacious, efficacious writ in all manner of illegal confinement. Illegal confinement. Keep that in mind. It is a summons with the force of a court order. It is addressed to the custodian, a prison official, for example, and demands that a prisoner be taken before the court and that the custodian present proof of authority. So they got to prove their authority over you. This is them. You're putting them on notice. So while they're charging you with all this other wing wham, because I'm doing it for the prisoners, man, because all we're doing all day is being charged with wing wham. So through the mind of this Thaddeus, this brother Thaddeus Culpepper, you know what I'm saying, we started saying, how can we apply this? It, it, this is what it is. This is one of a kind. I'm sure there's other examples that brothers got, but this is what I've witnessed, and you know what I'm saying, what I'm digging on, you know, if you're going that route, you know what I'm saying? So, and look, <clears throat> there's many routes to take, man. You choose up, you know what I'm saying? So now they got to prove their authority. The custodian, which is whoever's in, wh whoever's housing your vessel, you know what I mean? Whoever's warehousing your body is the custodian, now has to prove authority over you, allowing the court to determine whether the custodian has lawful authority to detain the prisoner. And how could they have lawful authority to detain you when you're the collateral? You're the primary creditor, and there's already an account, and you're going to put in special bonds, right? If you're doing this, you got special bonds, you know what I mean? So, why charge my account? Look, when I say they're getting $48,000 per prisoner, $48,000 per prisoner, I put it like this. My case was about 20, 20 racks, right? 20000 you know what I mean? I did six months, right? At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? After two trials and all this stuff like this, six months. 48,000, 20,000, whatever roughly it is, six months. So you can see that that six months, you know what I'm saying? Every day has a dollar. You see how they add this stuff up. So they said, okay, well, 20,000 restitution. So you still got to. It's, they still want you to pay restitution, so they want to double up anyway. They're going to find a way to double up. But then they have you warehouse for six months over a $20,000 case. Now, if it was a $48,000 case, then it'll be a year because they get about $48,000 per prisoner. So they're going to make that $20,000 off you anyway, but then they want you to pay that back to X, Y, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? So they want to double up anyway. And this is how their minds, it's all a bank. It's all money. And that's the difference, man, is that, yeah, we always had our legal, our law, right? But it wasn't like we benefited from, okay, you, you murdered a man, we got to murder you, all right? Um, you, know, you, you stole something, you know what I'm saying? Some, some folks get their, head, their hands chopped off, right? But 
It ain't like you benefited from chopping off somebody's hands other than putting fear in somebody's heart. It ain't like you was making money from that. Like literally, like for every hand you chopped off, you got money. That would be a very biased system. And this system makes money and it's actually quotas. Quotas, man. If the custodian is acting beyond his or her authority, then the prisoner must be released. So you say, all right, man, put the charges to the side. I know you're talking about uh, drugs, this and that, that. Do you have authority over me? Do you have authority to actually detain me? Or can you actually charge my account? And here's these special bonds, if that's the case. Or, you know, can we acknowledge that you are imprisoning the primary creditor, which is now the collateral of the corporation? You know what I mean? And that's a habeas unlawful detainer, you know what I'm saying? To be imprisoning the primary creditor when you can already discharge the account. You know what I'm saying? Why does my vessel have to be here? And if they can't prove authority to where your vessel has to be there, now you're, now you're taking on a whole other topic of conversation, man. So let's keep going. So if the custodian is acting beyond his or her authority, then the prisoner must be released. Any prisoner or another person acting on his or her behalf may petition the court or judge for a writ of habeas corpus one reason for the writ to be sought by a person other than the prisoner is that the detainee might be held in commune incommunicado which is solitary confinement all right most civil law jurisdictions provide a similar remedy for those unlawfully detained but this is not always called habeas corpus for example in spanish-speaking nations the equivalent remedy for unlawful imprisonment is the amparo de libertad all right habeas corpus has certain limitations though a writ of right it is not a writ of course so now you gotta learn the difference between a writ of right a writ of right and a writ of course it is technically only a procedural remedy it is a guarantee against any detention that is forbidden by law. Why? So you got to say, look, man, this is forbidden by law, what y'all doing. And, you know, I'm going to let him get specific. I'm going to let Thaddeus, the brother Thaddeus, get, get specific. And when his situation is complete, I will have him on and have a live interview. And we will, you know, talk about, you know, being in that clink, man, at the same time. And, you know what I'm saying, how special that was to really dig on this, man. So, you know coming up man dropping soon all right why why the writ the right to petition for a writ of habeas corpus has nonetheless long been celebrated as the most efficient safeguard of the liberty of the subject that's why we learned about it. if you are you know wiggling out of this system or something like that this is just a good jab you know what i mean you might have a different power blow, you know what I mean? But this is just a good jab to keep a nigga, keep a nigga off, you know what I mean? Let me just put you on lean. Let me just, you know, slow your roll for a minute. Might buy you some time to maneuver a little bit. Might, might, you know, give you some space to work with, you know what I'm saying? The writ of habeas corpus is one of what are called extraordinary, all right? Common law or prerogative writs. Common law, all right? Remember we dug on that, common law. Natural by law dug on that which were historically issued by English courts. So you're, you're taking it out of the colonial corporate and going to the source, all right? So now you're like, all right, I'm jumping over this colony of America. I'm going right into your common law. I'm going right into your, your English courts, you know what I mean? And putting them on notice that I'm being unlawfully detained according to your own system and your own law, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you could talk about Hebrew law all day and who you are and X, Y, and Z, but... You know, you're going to have to put them on notice in language that they speak sometimes. You know, look, according to your shit, you know what I'm saying, you are detaining the primary credit, and this is why it's unlawful, and that's what we're going to get to. Uh, that's a great link right there, all right? A little wiki link. There's another one I want to dig on. <laughs> While we flow in the water. Let's go to uh, Cornell, man. Hmm. All 
are. So again, habeas corpus, Latin for that you have a body. And the interesting thing is that even though a corpse is a dead body, um, and I don't know exactly what they're saying, the word habeas itself means, but it's almost like saying that you're coming back to life in the sense that you have a body. Like, you know what, I'm not dead. Ha, ha, bias, ha. I just know that ha is breath, right? Ha, ba, ha, bias, ha. You know what I mean? So you're coming back with that breath, man. Valley of dry bones. Latin for that you have a body. So this is something that a lot of brothers and sisters don't really know about. You know what I mean? This is why we was digging on it and got so excited about it. Because we said, man, this could literally set a lot of money set a lot of bros free, you know what I mean, if they did it the right way, and that's just like, okay, you, you dig on it, but here's some information to get you started, you know what I mean, um, because you're fighting your cases, you're saying that you're not guilty, or you're taking these deals, at the same time, what if you just filed a writ of habeas, and then you hit them from the ether, you know what I'm saying, you hit them from truth, you hit them from, you know, the, the perspective of, this is my account, I'm taking responsibility for for this over you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm putting you on notice to show me accountability, you know what I mean, for your for your accounting, you know what I'm saying? What's, what, what's the accounts? How much have you taken out of this account, you know what I'm saying? And why can't you apply whatever these charges are? Why can't you charge the account that you've been using? Uh, one, two, you're bankrupt. In the 30s, the corporation went bankrupt, has never recovered. So, not only are you a colonial corporate, but you are a bankrupt colonial corporation. And who does business while they're bankrupt? Who can officially do business as a bankrupt corporation? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, once you're in that situation, you know what I mean, where you can't pay back your debts, you know what I'm saying? you solvent, like you're, you, you completely, you, you can't pay back your debts. For well, now you are a company that can't pay back their debts so it's not like even you're not even working out of debt so we're being in prison unlawfully detained as primary creditors turned into collateral in the 30s by an insolvent delinquent bankrupt colonial corporation and that's what you take them into the habeas for and say look man as far as this account goes you're gonna have to show me something as far as this account goes, you know what I mean? Even if you thought I was guilty of X, Y, Z, why can't... Look, here's a special bond for $3 million. This this bro's putting up in, into his account. So whatever you're charging, you can charge my account. There's another one that a bro did uh, similar to it for $300 because he says, well, I'm an I'm a unlimited vessel. Here's $300 million special bond, X, Y. And like I said, I had Chef Candy send it send in most of the forms, you know what I'm saying? These are all special bonds, general bonds, that's on the government website. So it ain't like we typing it out, they already got them, but who's gonna lead you to the water? And why do, why do I gotta be sitting there never, never really hearing about this, digging on this, you know what I'm saying? But now, when I see the evidence of it, I'm like, this, this shit exists, man. Like, why are they here if no one's using them? And if no one's gonna use them, you know what I mean? It's like they they already are there, but no one's talking to you about it. No no one's telling you, look, man, you have an account. Here's bonds that you. What do you think a bail bondsman does? You think they literally just front the money of themselves, or do they have the information that you already have bonds in your account, or bonds to apply to your account, and they just tap into one thing, connect it to another, and really you're paying them really for something that they already just tapping into your account. They're tapping into the bonds. They're just issuing bonds, knowing that you are an infinite being. They're saying, oh, I'm going to write this bond and put this bond in their account. You're bailed out. Oh, 50000 to bail you out? I'll write a bond and, a, and apply it to your account. But you're not even conscious or aware of your account. You're going to court not aware of your account. The bondsman knows you got an account. So he's just taking your money and then writing a fifty thousand dollar bond with the information benefiting off the ignorant not leading you to the water because they need their money 
and you pay them 10% or something, right? So you, if you pay them 5000 they just pocket that because all they did was just write you a bond. That's a bit, they're, they're all over the place. So you write your own bond as a special bond, as a general bond, whatever the case is, the same way the bell bonds were done so that when you're in these jam-ups, this is just a quick jab to get some space, maybe get bonded out, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, but this is for you to recon if you choose to. And again, what I'm about to share it's certified, you know what I mean? So, you know, if you really want this drop, email me, music at 432thedrop.com. I ain't going to put it on the website. This is kind of private, you know, flow, you know what I mean? This is this that real spill, you know what I mean? I don't even want it out like that, but if whoever's serious and you want it, I will PDF this thing and hit me up, music at 432thedrop.com, man. And again, we're at the Cornell Law School. Um, a writ of habeas is used to bring the prisoner or other detainee before the court to determine if the person's imprisonment or detention is, is lawful. Habeas corpus proceeds as a civil action against the state agent, usually a warden, right? So the warden would be the state agent, whoever the warden is. So you're actually putting them on lien, putting them on notice against the warden, man. I mean, you dig on it, you read it, you, you pull up the link. Habeas petition proceeds as a civil action against the state. Immediately, you in the state or the government or the warden who holds the defendant in custody, whoever's in charge, and really the secretary of state, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day, is who you're hitting up because they control the money. If they say that uh, this, this account has already been charged and X, Y, and Z, the bench or bank or bench of the judge is just really working for the secretary of state. That's really the kahuna. So you can really file... Uh, not only, or really, yeah, filed this habeas, uh, but also submitted to the Secretary of State directly as well, because they control the uh, the accounts. You know what I'm saying? They they control the uh, the flow. You know what I mean? They can say, okay, this is this and this is that. You know, yeah, release him because we already are getting that, and we don't want no more funk about it. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, it's the Secretary of State. That this is an accounting problem. Like you got this account fucked up. You know what I mean? Let's let's correct this account. A habeas petition proceeds as a civil action against the state agent, usually a warden. It can also be used in extreme or to examine an extradite extra extradition process used the amount of the bail and the jurisdiction of the court. So at the end of the day you ain't got no jurisdiction. Remember when you talk about this corporation, they really only have jurisdiction like 12 miles around Washington, D.C. And every, everything else is like colonies. So they say that, you know, according to, I think, uh, Amendment 14, or we're going to get into all this, man. Um, the 14th Amendment, you became, you know, citizens of this corporation, you know what I'm saying? So when you sort of denounce that 14th Amendment right type of situation, and you say, hold up, man, you know. I'm not under this colony of this corporation. I, I, I'm not a 14th Amendment citizen. You know what I'm saying? I don't fall under this 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 extra layer of people in theory that's connected to Washington D.C. and the 12 miles around it or whatever the case is. I'm way over here. California didn't even have to pay taxes for a long time. That's why they got franchise taxes and stuff like that because they're a different entity. A lot of these states are different entities anyway. But we just agree to be for. 14th Amendment citizens or colonial corporate slaves, you know what I'm saying, birth certificate, now now we're signed off to this England situation, which is why we're talking English to begin with, habeas corpus to begin with, so now we're all slaves and collateral to who, the Queen, to, to England, to whatever London company that we've been digging on. The habeas corpus first originated in 1215 through the third, 39th clause of the Magna Carta, signed by King John. All right, 1215. I mean, they say Presser John got rolled up in 1202, 1203, so this has everything to do with Genghis Khan, people. It's got everything to do with Genghis Khan. What they call him, who, King John? Come on, man. Which provided no man shall be arrested or imprisoned except by the lawful judgment of his peers and by the law of the land. Man, can you please pull this up and read it from the Legal Information Institute at Cornell Law School, man? Because I'm going to read the habeas, but we got to get this background, man. 
Let's go. No man shall be arrested or imprisoned except by the lawful judgment of his peers and not or and the law of the land, not the law of the English uh, common law. The law of the land is Hawaii's law, the creator's law. So this is all what you bring out as an infinite being. Then you let them know who you are. You say, look, man, this happened. We're going to read it. This happened. This happened to the people. You know what I mean? This is what you're using us as. That this is how you flipping the script. And all we can do is state the facts. Now, what you about to read, how, how we break it down, these are just the facts. <coughs> this is his story, right? This is facts, though. You know what I'm saying? We're going to break through his story to get the drop, to get the facts. And then this is, this is the list of what you're bringing up. You know what I'm saying? Here's my stance. Here's, here's the issues with my unlawful detainment. But I'm saying before you are unlawfully detained like I am, like I was, when I'm fighting, when I'm still fighting today, you know what I'm saying? Because I got to get square. You feel me? I got to get square. You, you don't just, you know, put somebody in jail for, for six months. Just because, you know what I'm saying? Just because. Just 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 so that you can, you know, put a body in jail while I'm fighting these appeals, you know what I'm saying? Getting all my charges overturned. They leave me with mail fraud. And while I'm appealing that, put me in jail for six months. While I'm appealing mail fraud and got all of the credit card, identity theft, all that stuff tossed out. Now I'm not guilty of all the scheme of the fraud. I'm not guilty of all that officially after two trials. But oops, we f we're going to tell this mail fraud on here. Which means what? You're using the postal service to commit a crime. So what's the crime? Oh, it was supposed to be identity theft with the credit card. But now I'm not guilty of that after two trials. But you're going to leave me with mail fraud. Which means I was committing a crime. But the crime I'm not guilty of. So I'm unlawfully detained on GP. For this whole scheme and this whole setup with my own bro hand delivered from that but now i see why so i can get the drop and connect on the inside so i know what i'm doing it for i know where the real ones is at and i know i can't forget that you know what i'm saying for real talk you could be from the street all day and not get it man you know what i'm saying or you can be in that situation and still not get it but to get all the drop and then go in that situation for six months and have them issues and, and see what's going on with the food and see what's going on with the health and see what's going on, man, with the complete isolation and, 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 and the, I mean, look, man, these, these conditions are bad, man. I mean, this is just fucked up shit, man, real talk, you know what I'm saying? So, you, you, you don't understand, you know what I mean, until you see what's going on, especially in the working prisons, working camps, where they require these prisoners to work for 20 cents a day, a dollar a week. They're required. Modern day slavery, for real. This shit is going on today right before your eyes. Let's go, man. So this 1215, it said it originated in English courts. Remember, no man shall be arrested or imprisoned except by the lawful judgment of his peers, which we know what them peers is, right? And by the law of the land. So you go in that habeas talking about the law of the land. You feel me? English courts began actively considering petitions for habeas corpus in 1600, while habeas corpus had initially originated as an instrument in opposition to the king's divine right to incarcerate people, because they feel they have a divine right to incarcerate, incarcerate you, to put you in captivity. Remember, Papal Bull Doom Diverses, 1452, subjugate these Nagas in perpetual sl sl slavery, servitude. Perpetual. These prisons are perpetual servitude. Let's go. If you ain't in jail, you still in perpetual servitude because you paying you you breaking off the queen every month. Taxes, taxes, taxes. That ain't that shit ain't going to America. Your taxes ain't going to America. It's going to the queen. You're a slave, man. Regardless of what layer you're a slave on, you're a slave. I I work my way being in a in a in a penitentiary in Victorville, like a full Pen and fucking tentury, all right? 23 hour lockdowns, 20 hour lockdowns to be in my last three weeks at a prison camp. And let me tell you, them campers, I mean, they feel so free. 
they got a softball field, they got they got a weight pal outside, you know what I mean, all that stuff, but are they free? If they walk past this boundary, they might get shot. They might get sent to the hole to the shoot. And they got constant people kicking them in the neck bone and say, hey man, you know, don't go across the street, man, behind the behind the bars, man. You don't want to be behind the gates. So it's really more stressful in the camp because you got people constantly trying to set you up to go to the shoe or to get kicked into the low or to the median and all that kind of stuff. I had the least points in the entire camp because I got no prize. You know what I mean? You know, I got no prize. So I'm fighting this thing with my own bro. I got no prize. And I'm doing my time with lifers and shit the whole time. And then for the last three weeks, I get sent to a camp. But what I realized there, man, is that they're forcing, they forced us to work. I'm over there mowing lawns and mowing the warden's lawn. I'm like, this is, I'm, I'm a slave for real right now, man. This shit is fucked up. <laughs> and that's when you start putting shit in perspective. Like, anybody could be, at any time they want to remind you of the reality, you go behind the walls. That's the reality. This shit is an illusion that you got more space. You feel right now like the camper. You, you think, you know you ain't free, but you got more freedom than other motherfuckers. So you feel like they did at the prison camp. Like, yeah, but we, at least we had camp. I got seven more years, but at least I made it to the camp. I was at the low. I was at the median. Now I'm at the camp. You really feel like you've done some shit. And, and you have because you could be in a lot worse situation. But you're still in prison. You're still in prison. And you feel like that right now. You, oh, well, I got a lot more freedom than most, but you're still in prison. You're still the prisoner. I'm not just saying that hypothetically. No, my neck, are you? You're in jail right now. I went through my microcosm of an experience over that six months to tell you that as a macrocosm, you're all in jail right now. You're in the camp. You're in the prison camp. Yeah, there's solitary confinement, but you're in the camp right now. This is camp life. This is a degree of camp life. You know what I mean? There's, there's worse camp life, but this is a degree of camp life because they're still patrolling the streets trying to fill up these prisons man let's go let's go to that link talking about these uh private prisons let's get this one here first wow make sure you got your alkaline and drink plenty of water man i know it's about to be a a lot of rain, you know, all that kind of stuff's going down, a lot of snow, you know what I mean? That's just what it is, man. Let, let Hawaii work. We've been digging on a lot of stuff about California and the floods and the arc floods and all that too, man. So, you know, all that is relevant in this investigation. That's why we got to keep the water flowing. You know what I mean? i just been digging on the possibility that this whole arc flood and all this stuff, you know, happened real recent, man. And, you know, as we look into these California floods and these whole arc storms, they're saying a, a storm the size or however much the size of the Mississippi River right over your head, dropping all the water in the Mississippi River on you, that forms a flood like a mud, you know. And this is really, you know, a prime location for more than we think out, out here in California especially. Pull up the uh, link from Wonder Aggressive. Private prison sue state for not having enough prisoners. Now we can see what we talked about. We talked talked a little about the habeas. Let's go. A private prison in Arizona recently sued the state for having a lack of prisoners. For the sake of saving over $16 million in back pay, the state settled by paying the private prison $3 million. According to essentially... Paid, excuse me, Arizona essentially paid a company $3 million because not enough people are committing crimes. Or they just didn't illegally detain enough people. Because most people in there ain't in there for the crime that they did commit. You know what I'm saying? If they committed. To be fair, again, a private prison, which is, most prisons are becoming privatized now, whether it's owned by G.O. Corp. or a hey, Bob Barker's the man. You go, 
You go to the feds, it's Bob Barker, everything. You know what I mean? You go to the, look on the commissary list, it's Bob Barker, everything, man. <laughs> I wonder if I got a, uh, an old commissary list, man. This is my folder, man. And this is, see what kind of shape it's in. Got beat up. I mean, I had this in the rain. This is where, you know, I kept a lot of my, you know, my, my ideas, you know what I'm saying? Trying to see, uh, got these bonds, okay, so, I got all these bonds, I'm gonna share a few with you, uh, for the dismount, <laughs> you know what I mean, these are all the letters, uh, from Chef Candy, man, sending in all the, the special bonds, so a hop Chef Candy, we're getting the information to the brothers that we were requesting in our investigation, cause that's a whole nother investigation, I mean, yeah, we got, you know, we're looking for the San Manuel River, but we also are looking for every every weapon we can, you know, to combat the unlawful detaining of the Naga. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you can come at him with, look, man, I'm the Naga. Fuck you, let go. That's cool. Or you can say, hey, man, habeas corpus, man. Let's let's talk about this for real, for real. You know, at least it gives us some time to figure out a situation. And, you know what I'm saying, let the most high work from there, man. So, I got the bonds. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is a commissary list. At MDC Los Angeles Commissary, you know what I mean? You just pretty much check what you need. You know, there's a little spinning, spinning, spinning limit a lot of times, you know what I mean? Definitely you might want a radio, and that's why we want to get on that, you know what I'm saying? Really connect to an independent radio station uh, like KPFK out here that gets their signal into, especially MDC, these prisons out here. So, uh, you know, we're going to be digging on that, you know what I'm saying, this year, man. But, yeah, a lot of these, uh, man, you talk about shower shoes, man. You know what I mean? Toiletries. Bob Barker got the drop. Bob Barker, Bob Barker, Bob Barker Corporation is, is supplying most of this commissary list. Yeah, man, the price is right, Bob Barker. So, a lot of folks is making money in the private sector of detaining you. So while you're there, just know that Bob Barker's getting broke off. You know what I mean? For real. Alright. Let go. So Arizona's suing the state. Not having enough prisoners. They had to kick out three million. Alright. Now it says. That's good right here. Surprisingly, this type of contractual agreement is the norm. A review from the public interest revealed that out of 60 analyzed contracts between state local governments and private prisons, 65% contain language mentioning private quotas. This means that state officials have absolutely guaranteed private prisons a profit. Absolutely guaranteed private prisons a profit. The taxpayers, of course, this is who pays and who finances that guarantee. The taxpayers, man. <laughs> so that they're not coming out their own pockets, paying the private prisons. You know who's paying for it? You. You're paying for your own captivity. You pay for your own captivity. And that's just crazy. What happens when you stop paying taxes? They put you in jail, unlawfully detained. Prisoner quotas. The prison bed guarantees range between minimums of 70% occupancy in a California prison to 100% occupancy require requirements at some Arizona prisons. So. Sometimes we had empty beds, and then the next day, they bringing in some more brothers. Of course, some more uh, so-called Hispanics, Southsiders, Pisces, Serenos, Nortenos, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, 
by the time I left there, man, you know what I mean, they were sitting at our table, you know what I'm saying, eating and watching football, whatever the case, whatever we was watching, black, black ink of whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, or we was over there watching the Dodger game, you know what I mean, you know, it's, when you're in captivity, man, fighting each other is useless, you know what I'm saying, um, it didn't really matter about if you knew about Preston John or or if you knew that, you know, so-called black people are Hebrews or if you knew that this is the old world, it mattered, man, that you survived if it popped off. You know what I mean? There was lots, almost every day a damn near riot would pop off, you know what I mean? So at that moment, it didn't matter if your brother, you know what I mean, was, was uh, you know, Islam, more X, Y, and Z, you, as long as you knew and he knew and they knew that you had each other's back. You know what I'm saying? So, all around me, you know what I'm saying? Those was the warriors, man. You know what I'm saying? Those was the scrappers, you know what I mean? So, we had it all, you know, we had it connected, but so did other folks, you know what I'm saying? So, a riot was damn near imminent. It, it could be over getting seconds. Somebody got seconds and somebody else didn't get seconds and they food and somebody threw a tray down and start yelling at somebody and then we got everybody lining up, man. And if you don't line up, then you ain't showing no hood or no brotherhood, even though it's a fucked up, silly situation. But then now you got to see your own people because you ain't loyal to your people. And at the end of the day, it's about being loyal to your people. I ain't going to let my brother take an L. And now you're like, damn, I'm really in, in a fucking institutionalized mentality. You know what I mean? I can get in a situation and get two more years or five more years or get life in prison because of this situation. But if I, if I don't, you know what I'm saying, stand up for my people, then I don't stand up for my people. And my instinct is always to stand up for my, my real ones. I, you know, I'm cut from a certain cloth. You know what I mean? So, there ain't no play play. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you're in a real tough squeeze, man. You're in a tight squeeze, man. And it's being created, you know, like literally an, an artificial environment. But it's taking so many of our people, man. It's taking so many of our lives. It's taking so much time from us. They're making so much money off us. We're paying for it. We're paying for it. So California got the 70% as a minimum. Of course, not all private prisons in California is 70%. Some go up to 90%. Then you got a Arizona that says 100% occupancy requirements, man. 100%. If it ain't at 100%, that means they can sue the state and get their money. So what burden is on these courts to incarcerate you, whether they think you're innocent or guilty? If they say, look, man, let me get the six months out you, man. First, you're talking 15 years. Then you want me to sign a deal for five years. I don't sign that. Two years, I don't sign that. I'm innocent. I ain't guilty. I had full authorization on every transaction I went through with my bro, and he knows that. But just to get at me on this family vendetta on our situation... This dude claimed otherwise, and him being a multi-million dollar sports figure, they took his story and thought I wouldn't fight back. Thought I had no heart. Thought I'd be afraid because when people was yelling at me, jail time this, jail time that, they don't understand pedigree, man. And I fought it the whole way. And that six months was unlawful. So it gave me more reason to fight and continue fighting. And I suggest everybody fight, man. And maybe the habeas is a way for you to fight. Maybe it's just something that you know what I'm saying? You can get some info from, you know what I mean? But you might be in the squeeze, you might be in the clink, you might be in the situation. And again, you want this drop, hit me up, music at 432thedrop.com. Oh, yeah. All right, man. So I'm going start, to I'm start reading this habeas, man. But we're just talking about these prison quotas, 100% occupancy. I'm going to put a few different links to these private prisons and, and all this drop. So that we can uh, dig on some of this stuff right here, man. Main thing, man. The main show I want to get. Is this corpus. Let's go. Another great one is called. Uh, the Business Model of Private Prisons. A few people dropped this on me. Including Chef Candy. Love to Chef Candy. This is also a great one. My brother Dawi also dropped a great link. Love to Dawi, what it do. Love to all the Ether Squad, because I know that we've been digging on this, man. This is what we do it for. Our 
first. Let me start dropping this habeas, and then we're going to clean up just by going back through some of the business model of these private prisons. Let's get it. So fall back. Let's surf the wave. Just right quick, uh, if you pull up the Investopedia link, it says the difference between private prisons and public prisons. The private prison system raises a lot of questions. One that many people wonder about is how can a private company legally incarcerate people? Well, again, you're in a corporation already, so you got a, a colonial corporation and then a corporation within the corporation that's now detaining you. They think they can do it lawfully. When you are the real owner of the corporation, you're the creditor. There's a primary creditor, and then you got the secondary creditor, and that's the Fed or Federal Reserve. But before you get to the secondary creditor or the Federal Reserve, you already got you, my naga. Your birth certificate is the primary creditor. So don't skip over that fact. You're the primary creditor of the entire corporation. So when you're walking into that courthouse, you got to walk in as the primary creditor, not as some debtor. They want you to take the position of a debtor. Uh, you know, you owe us this time, you owe us this money, because all our money, moneta, juno, right? So, you're the debtor, but in reality, you're the creditor. And when you put the habeas on them, you let them know that you're the creditor, and it's a whole other ballgame. You're not talking about my charges anymore. You're talking about being legally or lawfully detained, and you better be talking about the law of the land, not just common law or English law or whatever case. You ever talking the law of the land, man. Isn't that the government's job to house and hold prisoners? The answer is yes, but the government does contract out quite a bit of their work. A public prison is one that is completely owned by the government. This means that they have to provide the building, the prison building staff, the guards and administration and oversee all the prisoners and everything that happens in the prison. Even with the public prison, many of the services are outsourced to private contractors such as food service, cleaning service, maintenance. And I got to object to that. Because where I've been, and I've been about three or four places, and that's six months time, they can't move me around. But from what I've seen, the brothers and the, and, the, and the captives are the ones doing the food service. The brothers and the captives are the ones doing the cleaning services and the maintenance, man. So everything is being really in-house, and they're really saving a lot of money by in-house and all this, and giving you 20 cents a day. So you're damn near doing it for free. By the end of the month, you might have $10, $15 that you made that you could use towards your commissary. Other than that, it's just a way of doing your time. And I mean, from anything from mowing lawns to construction to uh, electrical work, you know, at, at, at the CO's houses, like, they use you for everything, whether it's prison-related or their own personal shit, you know what I'm saying? For real. So that shit is for real. You know what I'm saying? When you, when, when you got the CEOs watching you mow their lawn, that's when it's like, all right, man, now I get it. You know what I mean? Because it ain't about pride, it ain't about ego. You know, you're in that situation. What you going to do? Start fighting all the CEOs or you going to mow the lawn, you know? Um, you know, you do you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just recording a record and I'm just letting you know what I witnessed. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know. It's get down and lay down. Either you mow that lawn or you get to be in the shoe, you know, damn near starving. But that's how they always did, you know, the uh, slave plantation. Either you get down or you lay down. And it's happening right now, you know what I mean? I had to go through modern-day slavery to come back to you and say, yeah, man, you know, I was in it. I went through it, you know what I mean? It wasn't six years, it wasn't 60 years, it was six months, and that's all I needed to see clearly and to know that the fight exists and this is our reality that we're fighting. You know what I mean? So let's go. Page one. I might not get to the whole thing, but at least you can get the gist of this situation. Again, love to Thaddeus Culpepper, man. Uh, much Baruch to you, bro. I, I pray you get to, you know, witness this soon because we talked about this, man. In my jail cell, man, you know what I mean? Just, man, sharing this with Drop Nation. He was just excited, man. One day I'm going to do an interview with Drop Nation and all that. So this is the first step, um, sharing this great work. And it was a it was a nightly thing, it was a daily thing. The bro always was showing up with questions, and I mean, I was thinking about this, I was thinking about adding this, 
and uh, you know, just to see it happen and see all the bros that worked and got a copy of this. And at the end of the day, everybody wanted a copy of this. Um, even the South Side homies and the Paisa homies, everybody wanted a copy of this drop. And uh, we made sure we, we, we ordered enough copy cards to get everybody copies and stuff like that. So this was really a group project and I'm just sharing it with y'all. Let's go. <laughs> Let's start here. Petitioner herein, plaintiff above, comes now, petitioning for the following. One. Petitioner petitions this court ex parte for an immediate order staying the following cases. Two. The request for a stay is based on the information stated herein or incorporated by reference herein. Three. To begin, petitioner incorporates by reference herein all United States codes, cases, and public laws. Petitioner also incorporates by reference all English and United States common law rules, principles, duties, and defenses. Four, specifically, petitioner incorporates by reference herein the Federal Reserve Act, Trading with the Enemy Act, the War Prisoners Act, all state and U.S. laws implementing or requiring birth certificates to be originated and or filed. Five, petitioner's claims are rooted in the exposition of the following scheme. Six, factual and legislative history. Seven, the following factual and legislative history is necessarily devoid of cites and quotes as petitioner is in custody, writing under time constraints, duress and under pressure, Again, you're under pressure signing these contracts. You're under duress. So whatever contract you did sign, you're doing it in custody. You're doing it under duress. You know what I'm saying? And without access to the United States Congressional Record. Eight, in or around 1929, it's the part, listen up. In or around 1929, the United States experienced its first economic crisis in the form of a run on the banks. What does this mean? The United States was without sufficient gold reserves to address the claims by certificate holders. All right. I'm just going to show you this part right here. You know. So you can see this ain't no play play. You know what I mean? I watched this brother type this out, man, right on the, uh, right, you know, typewriter just having conversations with us, you know, using the notes and whatever we've been talking about for days. And then he just, man, all praise the wild, man, just start kicking it, man. So, you know, we over here sharing it, digging on it, man. That's amazing because it, it took freedom to, to get back to you <laughs> to, get to just to get this done. So it took a lot of tenacity. And I know you appreciate here at the water because you're dealing with this personal experience but it's really all of our experience my experience is your experience i can dig on me and my bro in this situation i try to share that with transparency man because i got i ain't got shit to hide i know i know what i did i know what happened to me and i know what the bullshit is and i know what this jealous fool over here is, is, is kicking you know what i'm saying um you know so that's just whatever you know what i mean you can have all the money in the world and have an enormous uh, mound or mountain of hatred or jealousy over anything it could be over a woman it could be you know what I'm saying over whatever the case man and for me this was a situation where this this bro my bro was already suing my brother-in-law my sister's husband trying to act like he had some deficiencies and some properties that they were building throughout Maui and all this other stuff so they were already going this dude was already suing his own family I sided with my family, and then now I get attacked, you know what I mean? So now we're in a situation where, yeah, I could talk about that, but that's just a microcosm of the big picture, man. And the big picture is we do it for the prisoners. And it took that to refocus me like, yo, I love the drop like you love the drop. I love, you know, getting it and kicking it on the daily and all that, man. But all praise to why we got to be, we got to be for real, for real. It ain't just about doing this you know what i'm saying for who we see out here and who has access to the internet man we got to get our shit together 
so that they can have a pure vibration to vibe up to. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep going. Number nine, in response to the run on the banks, President Roosevelt ordered a bank holiday, closing the banks for approximately four days. Ten, when the banks were reopened, all banks in the U.S. became member banks of the Federal Reserve. The Central Bank of the United States petitioner is informed and believes that the Federal Reserve is an entity apart from the United States and independent therefrom. There's no connection between the United States and the Federal Reserve. Your taxes is not going to this colonial corporation. Why are you paying taxes? Why are, why are they requiring us to do taxes for the Queen's account? For the Queen's account. And who's owning and running all your colonial corporate accounts? Your name in all caps is a million dollar bank account. Somewhere. Everybody's name. Everyone got money. Millions of dollars in the account right now. Trust me. This is fact. So who's running all that? The same London company, the same thing, man. The hijacked city, man. All right, let's go. When the banks were reopened, number 10, all banks in the U.S. became member banks of the Federal Reserve. So now they all work for the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve is an entity that's apart from the United States. So all the banks are working for an entity that got nothing to do with the United States Corporation. 11, the arrangement made during the four day banking holiday was in fact an agreement or arrangement between the United States as debtor listen up the arrangement made during the four banking holiday was in fact an arrangement between the United States corporation as the debtor they're the debtor not you you go into court thinking you're the debtor no, you're paying for this. You're paying for the whole prison. They say taxpayer money, but in reality, they've been charging your account even more than that. So the United States is the debtor seeking the help of the Federal Reserve as creditor. With the passage of the Federal Reserve Act in 1933, the United States forever changed the face of the monetary system. It is also important to note here that in or around 1871, we're talking about the 1800s, we're talking about Tecum Sa, let's go. The United States incorporated and began to use a corporate instrumentality to conduct its affairs from that state, from that date. So after 1871, the United States incorporated and began to use a corporate instrumentality, money, corporate, paper, instead of gold to conduct its affairs from that date. Number 12, in the Federal Reserve Arrangement, the United States agreed to use the people of the United States as collateral for the insurance of debt paper from the Federal Reserve. The money was no longer backed by gold or silver, but instead was backed by the lives of the people of the United States. 13, the scheme works somewhat along this wise. A. Each child born in the United States generates a birth certificate. Follow me now. Follow Brother Thaddeus as he's taking us on a journey. He didn't have to do this. He didn't do it before we all connected. This was something that was a group effort to, you know, put life into this. For him to believe in it. For us to see the connection. To connect the scripture. To deliver it to you. This is not just us digging on a book. This is real life, real personal experience manifesting into the drop for you to dig on and get some healing due and see clearly. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's so important, man, to surf the wave and to be the water. No matter what situation Hawa got you in, whether you're innocent, you're guilty, whatever the case is. Look, being innocent don't mean nothing. We all guilty of something. So I'm not over there saying, oh, I'm so innocent. and everyone, Nah, man. Everyone guilty of something, man. You know what I mean? So don't go in there judging nobody because they had some priors or they had some situation. They want to be free, man. Why are they in the situation? Because they were invaded. Why is these Indians in jail? Why is these Indians in jail? Why is these Nagas in jail? Because their land has been taken. The law of the land don't even apply to them no more in these courts. It's common law. Corporate law. You know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't apply to the law of the land no more. This is constitutional, you know, this and that. The statutory, we're going to talk about these statutory laws. Let's go. 
Where we at? Let's go. Let's go. 13. The scheme works somewhat like this. All right. A. Each child born in the United States generates a birth certificate. All right. B. The birth certificate is deposited with the depository trust company as a, a securities index warehouse and Federal Reserve related corporation. C. The United States Treasury collateralized collateralizes the birth certificates in trans in tranches and prepares treasury bonds based on them according to a certain value d the u.s treasury delivers the treasury bonds to the federal reserve in exchange for the equivalent amount of federal reserve notes e the federal reserve issues the notes with interest and places an excise tax on them tax on them for use f the federal reserve delivers the notes to member banks throughout the country, which are all part of the Federal Reserve, right, since, the, since 1929 or 1933, uh, Federal Reserve's Act. G, the member banks are permitted by fractional reserve banking rule to create an additional 90% worth of new notes based upon the original issue deposited by the Federal Reserve. The new money created by the member bank being created by mere keystroke. The people of the United States, number 14, are never individually notified that they have been used as collateral for the monetary system. You think this is play play? You think Hawa had us on some play play? Or are, we, are we discovering or are, are we connecting something? Because 14, it says the people of the United States are never individually notified that they have been used as collateral for the monetary system. You weren't notified that they're using you as collateral. What does it mean to be collateral? It means that the shit is the fan, they can come and get you. If I want to start a, a baking donut company, all right, and I put up this water bottle as collateral, this the, this this my collateral, all right. So I, I'm gonna borrow the money to start this 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 donut house, all right. Here's my collateral, this copper vessel. Now if I you know screw up, or if I don't take care of business, they can come and get this right. So what's happening with the Pope and all that letter to Obama in 2014 saying, man, fall back. You guys are just landlords. You don't even get to carry guns no more. You're just mercenaries. I want my collateral. I want my copper vessel. I want my nagas. We own you. We own them. We own the Hebrews. You say to Pharaoh, let my people go. You don't own me. You don't own us. Let's go. So the people of the United States are never individually notified that they have been used as collateral for the monetary system. Neither are they reimbursed. Also, the people of the United States, petitioner included, or myself included, or yourself included, are never given access to the credit they help to create in the same way the credit was taken. So they don't even give us access to the account, to the credit itself. They're just using it. Your name in all caps, they're just using that. Millions of dollars, they're just using that. Number 15, the scheme continues. Taken together, wow, taken together, the Federal Reserve arrangement creates one debtor, the United States, and two creditors. Listen up, who's the two creditors? The people of the United States, you, that's one, and the Federal Reserve. So who's the primary, who's the secondary? This is true because in fact, in, in, in 1933, with the passage of the Federal Reserve Act, the United States declared the largest Chapter 1, excuse me, Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the history of the country. So they declared bankruptcy in 1933. They are bankrupt, a bankrupt insolvent corporation, meaning that they can't pay back their debts. You know what I mean? For losing all the gold. Now they're, doing, now they're using infinite beings or infinite lives. They use the lives of the people to back their, their wicked business that they have set up on our land. You're the collateral. What are we talking about? There's two creditors, the people and the Federal Reserve. But the primary is the people, which is why the habeas comes into effect, because you're putting them 
on notice as the primary creditor of the entire corporation. Hold up, man. Hold up, man. You can't enslave us and then act like this shit ain't happening. You can't enslave us and then act like, you know what I'm saying, not even let us know beyond us being in slavery. We, we kind of get that, but we don't know that you're being used as the actual collateral and they're bankrupt. So as soon as there's a switch, somebody else can come claim you as their property. Because you're the official collateral of the corporation. Let's go. And then they, de they declared the largest Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1933. That's a very important point because they never got out of bankruptcy. They're still insolvent. Number 16, with the debt paper issued by the Federal Reserve that you call Moneta Juno, you call money. With the debt paper issued by the Federal Reserve, the interest, the tax, the fractional reserve banking permissions, the debt accruing to the Federal Reserve and against the United States is unrepayable. They're, un they're, un they're insolvent. They can't pay back this debt, man. Let's go. They can print all the money they want. They can't pay it back. Let's go. Thus, the United States, because of the number 17, because of the Federal Reserve arrangement, is in a perpetual state of default and restructuring. They got you in perpetual slavery, according to the Dumb Diverses Papa Bull, 1452. And now they are also in a perpetual state of default, making you perpetual creditors and perpetual collateral. Let's go. 18. The United States had already prepared the groundwork for the Federal Reserve Arrangement by amending the Constitution. Amending the Constitution in certain respects and later through case law. 19. First. The United States passed the 13th and 14th Amendments. Listen up. In 1865 and 1868, respectively. Through the 13th Amendment, the United States permitted slavery and involuntary servitude. Through the 13th Amendment, the United States permitted slavery and involuntary servitude. Remember the Pope said, put you in perpetual slavery, servitude, involuntary servitude. It's, you didn't volunteer to be no slave. You a prisoner of war. You are the prisoner. You are the captain. As punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted through the passage of the 14th Amendment established that the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law shall not be questioned and that all, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States. So they made you citizens of the corporation regardless if you was around that 12 miles around D.C. and not 20 later in 1933 or thereabouts the United States eliminated the common law in federal courts in the case entitled Erie Railroad versus Tompkins look it up Erie E-R-I-E -E, Railroad versus Tompkins right there in the middle of the page I mean you see his brother's work right from the typewriter let's go <laughs> Erie Railroad versus Tom Tompkins eliminated the common law in federal court, so they're getting away from that too. I mean, this was a step-by-step -step thing. 21, also important to note here is that the United States passed laws regarding detention that allow federal judges and magistrates to determine whether a person was entitled to bail before you were automatically entitled to bail. Now they're trying to pass laws to determine what? Passed laws regarding detention that, uh, that allowed federal judges and magistrates to determine whether a person was entitled to bail, despite the fact that the Eighth Amendment establishes that, quote, excessive bail shall not be required. Excessive bail shall not be required. Excessive bail shall not be required. Now, they're playing with words. You shouldn't need no excessive bail or whatever bail, you know what I mean? But now... They're saying, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put that in the judge's or magistrate's hand to determine your bail. Before, it was like, no, you know, it's not required to, to do this bail thing. What's the fine? What's the fine? You're charging my, my, uh, my corporation, you know what I'm saying? You're breaking the contract. You're enslaving the primary creditor, and you're not letting them know that they're the collateral. That is really the main factor of this habeas, is that they're not telling you nothing. They can't force you to be collateral in the system when you're really the primary creditor of the system. How can the primary creditor be the collateral? That's unlawful detainment. 
and you're not informed of it, that's unlawful to make a race or an entire group of people slaves. Don't tell them about it. They didn't sign up for it. It's involuntary servitude. And you're forcing them to be the collateral, letting them know that they slave. 22, with the decla declaration of bankruptcy, the, the United States began using the aforementioned constitution provisions and case law in a way favorable to the Federal Reserve. So they started favoring the secondary creditor and shitting on the primary creditor. That's you. Let's go. It's secondary creditor. So again, they started being way favorable to the Federal Reserve. It's secondary creditor because you're the primary. You're the first. The people, or excuse me, and to the exclusion of and detrimental to the, ba the best interest of the primary creditor who is the people, the people of the United States. 23, the United States being began by using the 14th Amendment and Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 as a means to take sovereignty from the people. 24, using its ability to regulate commerce between the states and its exclusive power to legislation within the 10 mile district of Columbia, the 10 mile, I kept saying 12, but he's saying 10 mile district of Columbia. Again, using its ability to regulate commerce between the states and its exclusive power to legislate within the 10 mile district of Columbia, the United States began organizing a means to create legislation that applied to a class of citizenship that differed greatly from the citizenship contemplated by the Constitution. This second class citizenship through the 14th Amendment necessarily stripped the people of the United States of rights secured through common law, the Declaration of Independence, and the 9th and 10th Amendments. So now they force us into a second class citizenship through the 14th Amendment. The United States' deft use of the 14th Amendment and the aforementioned clause ultimately deprived the people of a Republican form of government as set forth in Article 4, Section 4, 25. The most important feature in preferring the secondary creditor and denying the primary creditor, as you, my naga, was, the, through, was that through the government's use of admiralty jurisdiction, Article 3, Section 2, provides that there are four judicial power extensions, law, equity, admiralty, and maritime. Again, there's four judicial power extensions, law, equity, admiralty, and maritime. Let's break it down. Each separate and distinct from the other. Over time, the United States merged all four extensions, extensions into one, beginning first with the merger of law into equity in or around 1961. So first you had the law of the land, or then they kind of had a common law break off of that. And then now they pretty much overrid that and went to more of an equity law. Then it's going to go more into an admiralty and then a maritime situation or more time situation. Let's go. Over time, the United States merged all four extensions into one, beginning first with the merger of law into equity in around 1961. Eventually, the United States merged admiralty and maritime jurisdictions to the already merged law and equity by appending the supplemental rules of admiralty to the federal rules of civil civil. Uh, procedure. Later, the federal rules of civil procedure were made applicable to the federal rules of criminal procedure, closing the loop. 27. Together with the erosion of the common law, the United States began creating a new judicial power extension not previously contemplated by the Constitution and therefore not in pursuance of the Constitution as set forth in Article Number 6. The new judicial Power extension was the specie of statutory crime. Why do you bring up a habeas to show that you've been unlawfully detained? If you've been unlawfully detained or even before you're unlawfully detained, make sure you got the right bonds in place to at least have some type of checkpoint when they're coming at you for charges, charges of this, charges of that, conspiracy of this, this, that. Hey, man. It's a crooked system. At least you got some type of balance in place to say, look, man, I know you're trying to charge my corporation. Let me take responsibility here of, you know, my dynamics, you know what I'm saying, and let you know that I'm putting a lien on this whole thing. I, I, I got to put a hold because you're, you're operating my corporation instead of me. 
How much have you, how much operation have you already done on my corporation? How much charges have you already put on my corporation? You know what I mean? And very important point right here. Together with the erosion of the common law, the United States began creating a new judicial power extension not previously contemplated by the Constitution. The new judicial power extension was the species of statutory crime. So now they're using statutory law. They're not using common law or X, Y, and Z. They're using statutory law, which only really applies to the 14th Amendment citizens. So through this crime that happened right under your nose, you've been made 14th, uh, sec 14th Amendment second class citizens. You're not really, you know what I'm saying, even through the Constitution, what the people is supposed to be. Now you're the primary creditor. You're also the collateral of the colonial corporate, and you're falling under statutory law. So when you go to law now, this statute, that statute, statute number, statute, they're just kicking statutory law at you, and none of it truly applies to you being of the land, and it definitely not applying to even common law. You know what I'm saying? It only applies under this 14th Amendment situation. And when you step out of the 14th Amendment situation, that's when you guys have a conversation in reality outside the matrix, man. Let's go. 28, when first ordained by the people of the United States and their posterity, the constitutions setting forth of the four judicial power extensions mentioned above included the common law. The common law was and is important because it required things like corpus delecti, D-E-L-I-C-T-I, and a complaining witness in the case where a crime was alleged. Thus, law as a judicial power category meant common law as there was no such thing as United States statutory law at the time of the promulgation of the Constitution. It was all about this common law which connected more to the law of the land than the statutory law does. 28. The new species statutory law and statutory crime were not proper fits for the law extension as they were intentionally made to work apart from the common law. Additionally, the equity power extension was not a proper fit for the statutory law and it required contractual privity between parties to operate. Equity is the compelled performance of contractual provisions or the punishment for the default thereof. I'm just going to read it so you got the drop. Again, email me, you know, music at 432thedrop.com if you're serious about getting a PDF of this. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to do a lot of digging, but at least you got the water. 29. Ultimately, the United States settled on admiralty jurisdiction as the judicial power extension for the application of statutory law. So in order for them to operate under these statutes, they had to also operate under admiralty or maritime. They couldn't operate under law or, or even equity no more after they merged law and equity in 1861. This was done for several reasons. Admiralty provided a form where contracting parties could resolve disputes originating on the high seas, man. So this is all about being a vessel. And what they do, they take your vessel, right? They they warehouse your vessel, which is your ship. So what are they doing? They're 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 warehousing your your ship, right? And so what they do, Admiralty provided a form where contracting parties could resolve disputes originated on the high seas. All that was needed to trigger Admiralty was a valid international maritime contract where disputes involved incidents occurring on ships, oftentimes maritime garnishment processes was used to arrest the sea-going vessel, that's you, being in it to dry dock. That's why you got documents in court, because you're in a vessel, the court itself is a ship, and is parked in dry dock with documents. Let's go. Bring it, bring it into dry dock. They're bringing your vessel into dry dock. And to hold it as collateral while the dispute between seafaring contracting parties was resolved. So they're holding your vessel while you're disputing. You might be appealing your case, whatever. But they're holding your vessel in dry dock while this, while the, uh, while the uh, dispute between seafaring contracting parties was resolved. Sometimes it's never resolved, right? Because you might not be aware of your side of the contract that you're the primary creditor to begin with. The Admiral's Court resolved the disputes through use 
of equities compelled performance principles where a contracting party defaulted on a contracting contractual provision, the jurisdiction or judicial officer admiral could use penalties for the party's default of the contract, including warehousing the vessel at issue for payment, but they're not even really requiring a payment. <coughs> <coughs> oh, man, it's a lot of read. They're not even requiring a payment. They're not even really telling you that you could pay this fine or that fine. They ain't even giving you bail most of the time. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. 20 minutes. Let's go. So now they're warehousing your vessel. Including warehousing the vessel at issue for payment for one party where one party could not pay the contractual penalty. The United States replicated the admiralty process for use with its new creation statutory law and statutory crime 31 first the United States created new statutory legislation through its exclusive legislative power over the District of Columbia this new statutory legislation would apply only to citizens made so through the 14th Amendment the new statutory laws would not be laws per se but would be would in fact be contractual provisions the contractual provisions would be enforced through equity when the United States determined that a 14th Amendment citizen of the district defaulted on a statutory crime provision. The 14th Amendment district citizens would be arrested through the use of maritime garnishment. Man, I hope y'all getting a drop here, man. I mean, my brother Thad is putting it together. Sorry, y'all got this hot lamp on me, you know what I mean? Cause I want y'all to be able to see clearly, man, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So y'all can see clearly. I got this hot lamp so you can see the work. La Hawa. So, you know, got your boy Bacon, man, but, you know, I'm all right. I'm all right. It's good. As long as you can see clearly, I'm good. Let's go, let's go. 33. Because admiralty jurisdiction is not only concerned with the contract and dispute, the Constitution, as an index of fair play, is not necessary or existent when not specifically included in a contract. It should be noted here that 14th Amendment second class citizenship provides for certain privileges and immunities, none of which rise to the level of constitutional rights proper. 34. The United States justified its use of admiralty and its requirement that there be an international maritime contract and dispute to trigger its jurisdiction by, quote, contracting with its residents through use of entitlements. The United States made persons born in the United States subject to the jurisdiction thereof through deception. When a birth certificate, listen up, man, listen up, let's go. I'm over here baking for you, let's go. <laughs> when a birth certificate was issued for a social security number or a social security number okay was applied for the United States without the knowledge of the applicant listed that person or persons as members of the district sound like sound like uh what's that dang thing man uh the what is it the uh, hangover games the, the hunger games the hangover games man you know what I'm talking about <laughs> The Hunger Games, man. So the districts. All right, let's go. So when a when a birth certificate was issued or a social security number was applied for the United States without the knowledge of the applicant, listed that person or persons as members of the district, just like that. Now with that, they got you as a second class citizen. Now they got you as a Fourteenth Amendment citizen in the colonial corporation, but they're not really giving you the legal drop. You know what I'm saying? They ain't, they ain't giving you the real law, the law of the land no more. Let's go. But here's what it did. It listed the persons as members of the district, made them officer of the corporation, and also serendipitously made them 14th Amendment citizens, the second class citizenship described above. Number 35, by being presumed a 14th Amendment citizen, since you now say, yeah, this is my, this is, you know, I'm, I'm a citizen of this corporation as a 14th Amendment citizen is really what you are now. The United States then made that citizen subject to all of the statutory crime provisions created through its exclusive 
district legislative power and through its power to regulate commerce between the states. 36. When the 14th Amendment defendant citizen is arrested within the district and brought to court, he or she is unaware that the district court is in admiralty, so they don't even tell you which law they're practicing. You gotta ask them, you practicing law, equity, admiralty, or maritime? But you're unaware that they are even in admiralty. The statutory crime provision charge is a contractual provision through this farce admiralty statutory, you know, system that's just set up to, you know, take away any rights you could have. The statutory crime provision charge is a contractual provision and that the court is enforcing the contractual provision by taking silent judicial notice of the fact that the defendant is the joint debtor with the United States and that the defendant is an unwitting contract party to the provision at issue and that his or her body may ultimately be warehoused as payment for defaulting on said contractual provision. 37. The 14th Amendment defendant citizen is also unaware when entering the courtroom that several other dis disadvantages await him or her. 38. When the 14th Amendment defendant citizen was born and made subject to the jurisdiction of the United States through artifice, the United States also used the occasion of the citizen's birth to create a, who he calls it a set esqui, es, estui, KV Trust. CSG. He, he says it perfectly. I can't really say it. CS3 KV. CS3 KV. Alright. Trust. <laughs> but let's see what it says. A CSG. A CS3 KV Trust. This trust is open when the birth certificate is issued this ain't no play play man so as soon as you got that birth certificate birth certificate for your child or you got that birth certificate for you it opened up a trust that's what i'm saying they're charging that trust they've been charging that trust but you're not aware of the trust right you're not aware of any of this you're not aware of the game that's being played you're not aware that you're in statutory you know what i mean you're not aware that you're in admiralty you're not aware of yet of the 14th amendment second class situation you might not be aware that they are even in bankruptcy since 1929, that they're insolvent. So you're being persecuted by an insolvent corporation in bankruptcy, using you as primary collateral, as the primary creditor, and create this CS3 KV trust. All right, this trust is open when the birth certificate is issued and received by the depository trust company. This trust is supposed to be created for the benefit of the beneficiary 14th Amendment citizen, but is in fact the trust is used by the United States to keep track of the credits, debits, bonds, and securities issued in the name of the citizen. So, again, this trust is supposed to be created for the benefit. It's, But it is there. That's the thing. It's like, this thing is real. There's a real trust that you're not tapping into under your name, all right? And some folks know how to pay off mortgages and all kind of stuff with it because it's real when you take control of your trust, all right? There's steps to that. A lot of YouTube got dropped on that. Um, but this trust is supposed to be created for the benefit of the beneficiary, 14th Amendment citizen, but is in fact, but in fact, the trust is used by the United States to keep track of the credits, debits, bonds, and securities issued in the name of the citizen, 39. When the 14th Amendment citizen defendant is held into court, he or she is unaware that, that a testimony trust proceeding is happening at the same time the citizen's defendant's, the citizen defendant's case is being called. So you over there in court playing the puppet show, playing this, um, this theater. It's all theater, man. So everyone has a role. And in this theater, in reality, it's called a testament, testamentary trust proceeding. Because you're in there talking about your trust. You don't think trust. You think that is they got something on you. But really they want to charge your trust. So you're really having a testamentary or testamentary trust proceeding. That's happening at the same time that this case is going on. It's really about your trust. It's really about the money. All right? 40 and 19, or excuse me, in 1666. Remember, they thought the world was ending in 1666. All this stuff applies. England passed an act entitled the say 
say S3KV Trust Act. This act declares that when an English person was lost at sea or otherwise unaccounted for for a period of seven years or more that the person was deemed dead. So if they can't find you for seven years, that, that, that's, that's where they got the statutory law thing. Oh, statutory, after seven years you're dead, like it's dead, all right? Or at least civilly dead, all right? What they call a civil liter mortis, 41. Apparently, the United States adopted this practice as mentioned already. The United States had adopted the practice of pledging the lives of the people, pledging the lives of the Naga as collateral, man. The lives of the people of the United States as collateral. Wow. For debt paper, for money from the Federal Reserve, man. So you are the collateral of this corporation, period. By presuming the CSGKV Trust Beneficiary Civiliteer Mortis for the duration of the life of the 14th Amendment debt citizen, the United States could administer the trust affairs with impunity. Also, as mentioned prior, the United States pledges the souls... Is you soul chilling, man? The United States pledges the souls of its constituents without notice and a hearing to the individuals affected. 42. At court, the dramatis persona of court personnel discloses roles different from those normally supposed when the idea that a testamentary trust proceeding is what is truly afoot. <laughs> So the roles change, in other words, the drama changes the, at court, 42, the drama, the dramatis persona, this whole personification of drama, <laughs> all right, of court, personnel discloses roles different from those normally supposed when the idea that the testamentary trust proceeding is what is afoot. The clerk becomes the efficient. So once it's all out in the open, the clerk is now not just the clerk, it's, it's the efficient. She, she or he is the efficient, naming the judge trustee of the trust for purposes of the proceeding. So for the purpose of this testamentary trust proceeding, the judge is sitting over your trust, not you. He's the trustee of your trust, right? The clerk is the efficient. The judge is the trustee. This is not only cognate, cognate, cognizable from the observation from the congressional record which petitioner herein recalls from memory so again he's over there writing this from memory he had no legal books around him he just had notes and all the stuff that we was talking about and bringing up as far as the indigenous truth is concerned man I mean Preston John was involved in this man you know what I'm saying he just he just at the tight rider man just flowing like man we gotta finish this let's go let's go what else we got what else we got you know what I mean? I mean, this was a big part of the investigation, man, from beyond the wall that I'm sharing with you here because you're still beyond the wall. You're still in captivity. You're still the prisoner. You're still the POW. You're still the prisoner of war. Let's get a couple more pages if we can, man. Again, man, this is 13 pages. I'm not going to cover it all, but I told you, man, I'm going I'm to bring something to you, man. Let's go. So this is not only cognizable, 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 <laughs> Cogniz cognizable, right. cognizable. Right. From the observ <laughs> observation, I'm trying, man. Uh, from the congressional record, which petitioner here recalls from memory, at the time of debate of the Federal Reserve Act, both senators and congressmen alike noted that what the bill actually called for was a mortgage on the lives of the personality of the people, man. A mortgage, mortgage, man. All right, you know, when you really dig on the etymology of mortgage, man, you back into the dead, you back into the corpses, you back into the mortuary. Let's go. We're just talking about more. <laughs> on the debate floor, Charles Lindbergh famously remarked that if it passed, the act would represent the greatest crime ever committed. So you're putting your account all in as a habeas to say, man, this is the greatest crime ever committed. I'm being unlawfully detained. Let me make sure I'm not being unlawfully detained even if you ain't in prison right now you still are being unlawfully detained as a prisoner of war let's go 43 with the passage of the act the secretary of the treasury became the tr the trustee of the account so now the secretary of the treasury is the trustee of your account which is why the habeas corpus is cc to the 
uh, Secretary Treasury, because that's really the boss over this account, right? According to this corporation. Thus, all government officers, including courts, became agents of the bankruptcy trustee. The judge now acting as trustee for the CSTKB Trust is charged with administering the trust for the period of time that the charge, the charging money, the charging swipe, the charging brought by the claimant plaintiff prosecutor, he's the claimant plaintiff, is being settled because in Admiralty and in Law Merchant, the judge is under no obligation to inform the civilly dead defendant that the court personnel are in fact determining whether a trust created in his name without his knowledge should be charged for the statutory crime provision presently at issue 45. Typically, the testamentary trust officials are anxious to conclude matters in the case because we're the civilly dead 14th Amendment debt citizen were the civilly dead 14th Amendment debt citizen to awaken and realize what was truly transpiring he or she would reclaim the rightful position so this is like Deuteronomy 28 everything being flipped but in legal terms or habeas terms or common law terms because were the civilly dead you are dead Ezekiel right dry bones 14th Amendment debt citizen to awaken and realize what was transpiring he or she would reclaim their rightful position as trustee of the trust and as creditor to the charging party and change the outcome of the proceeding demonstra demonst demonstrably demonstrably you know you know what I'm talking about you know it would change the entire game however the awakening of the citizen defendant rarely occurs 